Well, now we move into frames and machines. This does it all sound that sophisticated. It's essentially beyond trusses. What were trusses? They were pin connected to force members. Well, frames and machines are going to be pin connected, but we go beyond two force members. You can have three force members or more, but they're going to be pin connected just like you had a truss with a lot of components. A frame or machine can have multiple components, multiple uh, parts to it. All right, so frame and machine, I wouldn't uh, overanalyze the distinction between a frame and machine for introductory purposes, but a frame supports a load. That makes sense. That's what a frame does, holds it up. And then what does a machine do? do? It transmits a load or transmits a force. So maybe I apply a force over here, and that machine puts another force, changes its magnitude, and it magnifies or decreases it and puts it over there. So what we have to do is we have to get free body diagrams. That was the key to analyzing trusses, either using method of joints or method of sections. It's the key for the rest of this chapter, frames and machines. But we're going to need multiple free body diagrams. We just did a kind of free body diagram of a joint, free body diagram of a section. Here we're going to do free body diagrams essentially of every member. Sometimes you don't need to do it for every member. You'll be able to solve for all your unknowns before you analyze everything. But the key is you're going to have to focus on the forces between members. If they're pin connected, if I have a member right here and it's pin connected with another member that's like this, and the if I isolate it and I put the member over here and I say that it feels a force in the X, F at, at this pin A, let's say F X at A, then if I go to the blue and I do a free body diagram of that one, to be consistent, it's equal and opposite. It's like if the blue is pushing on the red to the left, then the red is pushing back on the blue to the right. And that you just have to be consistent, F, X, at A. These have the same magnitude, and now they're consistent in their direction. So if you calculate that, oh, this was uh, 15, I don't know, kilonewton, then this is 15 kilonewton over here, positive as well. Let's say it's negative 15 kilonewton. Well, it's negative 15 kilonewton on the other one, and basically instead of pushing the red to the left, it's actually pulling it to the right with the negative answer. So let's solve this problem. It says determine the horizontal and vertical components of the reaction at pins A and C. So we look at our structure. Here is a support at A. Here is a support at C. We have a load and a load, two loads, no moments, just force loads. And we see that we have this member A to B, and it's pin connected at B with another member, which is slightly different color, that is curved, arced like that. And it's, again, joined at B. Point B is a pin connection for these two members. Okay, and this is loaded right here. Now, you could tell the member A to B is not a two-force member. That's the only thing new about this. Before, when trusses, it were all just two force members. Now, nope, they're a little more complicated. Likewise, B to C is not a two force member. Okay. Whenever you're solving for frames and machines, you still look for two force members because it really simplifies our analysis. Remember that? The two force member pin connected at the end is either in tension or compression going through the pinned connections on the ends. So I've taken and drawn the free body diagram for the entire structure. For the entire structure, I didn't worry too much about just put AX in the positive X direction, put AY in the positive Y, don't try to overthink these CX and CY in the positive normal directions. And then when you solve for them, I would anticipate that at least one of those would be negative. And when I look at the answers, sure enough, CX will need to be negative in this problem. Okay? Okay. But if I look at this and somebody says, 
okay, I want to solve for the free body diagram of the entire structure, and I want to solve for four unknowns in two dimensions. Do you think I have a shot at solving for four unknowns in 2D? This is a 2D problem. I can get three equations in math. Can I get three equations to solve for four unknowns? Almost always not, unless they're so trivial. But this is going to get where you can't solve it. But I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to sit there and say, I really don't want to dissect this into two members and then analyze it independently, you know, the two members with new unique free body diagrams. Let's just try and solve it if I have the entire frame or, or, or machine or whatever this component is. So if you did the sum of the moments about point A equal to zero, what does that give us? Gives us 150 times three foot. That's going to be making it want to rotate in the clockwise. What are you going to pick up here? Well, this one, it, I would bring it down to here. Well, uh, there's a number of ways to do this. Um, you could transmit that force down to here, decompose it into two components right there. And so we'll have 100 pounds. And then I'll, I'll pick off the, uh, this will be the 100 pound times the cosine of 45. This is 100 pound sine of 45, decomposing it like that. Now print, use a principal transmissibility, thinking that it could have been applied down here at this other point instead of at this point. So it'd be 100 pounds times the sine of 45 times a moment arm distance of two foot. And that makes it want to rotate in the clockwise. Plus 100 pounds cosine of 45 times the moment arm distance of five foot coming out this way. That makes it want to rotate in the clockwise as well. And then I'll have this CX, so it's equal to C sub X times the moment arm distance of two foot. That makes it run a rotate in the counterclockwise, so I put it on the other side of the equal sign. And uh, C sub Y times the moment arm distance. Uh, this one's a little tricky because I got this funny. It's uh, two foot plus two foot plus three foot. That's five, six, seven foot. Well, you can get the equations with the unknowns in them, but you're not going to be able to solve for them. You're going to have to decompose and go inside this, this uh, frame, if you want to call it that. All right, Same, similarly, do the sum of the forces in X, sum of the forces in the Y. I think that's instructive to do that, but you won't be able to solve for it. So what do we do? We come in here and we cut this member right here at B. And we isolate the member A to B, call this A to B. And then we also isolate member BC, All right? So I draw a free body diagram of member A to B. I still have my AX and AY at the support, but I have this internal at pin to B, connection at B. Likewise, first time through, I wouldn't overanalyze is does this member A to B feel a uh, pulling to the right horizontally? You know, that's the way I've set up the free body diagram. At this point, I wouldn't overanalyze it. I would just say I'm going to assume that's the positive BX direction acting on member A to B. Once I pick that, when I go over to member B to C, it has to be in the opposite. I can't put BX. That would be incorrect to put BX in that direction. It has to be opposite direction. So we're talking about the magnitude of BX as one unknown. And it applies to both members. Okay. Likewise for BY, I wouldn't overanalyze it. I would just pick it. One of the members would be positive up. And then the other member, it has to be the opposite direction, BY down. Now I have these. Okay. So if I have if I just do the, my math counting, how many unknowns do I have? I've introduced more unknowns. I had AX, AY, but now I have BX and BY. 
but I had CX and CY. So how many unknowns do I have? Six. I grew the number of unknowns, but how many equations can I get? From the free body diagram from member A to B, how many equations can I get? Three. And from this one, three. The math works. Three plus three, six equations with six unknowns. Be a moment equation, force equation, force equation. Forces in the X, forces the Y, sum of the moments about some point that you pick that's really smart. Could you just straight up solve for the moments with the information that you have without going through a equation stuff? You want to, right, we don't want to set up a six by six. We want to be able to solve, put one equation, get one of those unknowns and solve for it. Okay. That's what you're suggesting. And I think what you're going to do is, is if you came over here for this member A to B, if you picked point A and you did the sum of the moments about point A, AX wouldn't contribute, AY would not contribute, nor would BX contribute, and that's what I think you're getting at. Now I can have one equation, one unknown, and I can solve for BY. How many people have already solved for BY? What is BY? You got it? What you got? 90. 90 pounds. How do you do that? Well, you did the sum of the moments about point A, and what we have that equals to zero. You have 150 making it spin clockwise at a moment arm distance. 150 times 3 must equal the, the counterclockwise of BY times the moment arm of 5. Solve for that one. Perfect. Okay. Now that you solved for BY, maybe even write it on here. This is 90 pounds to help you. Which one do you think you could solve for next pretty easily? You have it? AY. AY. So how'd you get AY? Some of the forces in the Y. So we have 150 down. That must equal to zero. 150 down is equal to AY up plus BY up. AY is 60. Uh, what about the AX or the BX? Well, I only have one more equation. Uh, I do have two unknowns. I see a dead end. Let me go to the other member. When I go to the member B to C, do you see what I'm doing? I'm trying to judiciously get through the system. Let me copy this and move it out of the way. So this was all for member A to B, right? For member A to B. Now we focus on equations equilibrium for member B to C. We already know what BY is. BY is 90 pounds down, isn't it? Okay. Uh, what do you suggest? Let me ask you this. Uh, hmm, okay. You could do this. If I took this line, straight line back, and this straight line up, that would be in a point that's off of my object, off of my curved surface, right? Let's call that point O. I'm, it's not point O, but let's call it a point O. Could I do the sum amount of the moments about that point, which is not even on my object? It's not even on the curved surface, the curved rod. You can. You can. Do you see that? And what's the beauty of doing the sum of the moments about that point O right there is, this 100-pound force line of action goes right through it. BX line of action goes right through it. And CY's line of action goes right through it. I only have one unknown, CX. And it's, so what we find is that let's do the sum of the moments about this point O. And we're left with BY times 2 foot. That's going to be in the positive counterclockwise plus C. Uh, x, CX times 2 foot, that's also in the positive counterclockwise, that it has to equal to 0. I pause. Did I lose anybody or did you follow? Give me a thumbs up if you followed that. Good, 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 good. Okay, so what do we solve for? We solve for CX and CX comes in at, what's the answer for? Yeah, it comes in at the negative 90 pounds, negative 90 pounds. So on my free body diagram, it's not really pushing up on my object. It's pulling down and holding it to the ground. All right. All right. Uh, 
let's do another one. Which one do you want to do? Sum of the forces in the y equal to zero? Yes, you could. Yes, you could. And once you start getting good at this, that you could move to this point. It's a new point. Let's just do that. Let's do the sum of the moments about this point. Do you want to give it a name? Call it point P. I don't know. Point P. I don't know. Maybe that's not a good name because P is sometimes load P. Uh, I don't want to call it A, B, C. I don't know. Point O. I don't know. Point D. There's D has not been used in this one. So if we do the sum of the moments about this point D, what does that give us? BY goes through it. CX goes through it. The force goes through it. So we have BX times a moment arm of two foot plus CY times a moment arm of two foot. And both of them make it want to rotate in the counterclockwise. <clears throat> and so we have that um, CY is negative BX. CY is equal to negative BX. Pardon? No, it's good. It's still good. It's going to help us. And then let's solve for one of those, uh, some of the forces. Maybe I tuck it over here. Sub of the forces in the Y equal to zero. Okay, what does that give us? Uh, we're going to get the BY down. I'm going to put negative BY. And then I'm going to put... Uh, uh, minus 100 times the, the square root of 2 over 2, which is the uh, cosine of 45 degrees. All right. And then we have, um, maybe I just put both of those are down, and the only one pushing up is CY. And then BY was 90 pounds. And the CY comes in at 161 pounds, 160.71. Well, now, see, your equation did help because BX is the negative of 161 pounds. And now we can look for, once I know what BX is, maybe there's some of the forces in the X back on member A to B. This is a little confusing because you're doing equations of equilibrium on one member, A to B, then you're doing equ equilibrium equations on the other member. Uh, over here, this was all member uh, B to C equilibrium equations. Now go back to the last, sum of the forces in X for member A to B. That gives us that AX plus BX is equal to zero. We solved for BX, so AX is 161. There, you can box all that. I pause. Does this all look good? Thumbs up, thank you. Any others? Good, thank you. Good? 